What's up YouTube? Today we're learning everything about the equipment for making beats. Hey! Before we get to the video, please leave a like, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because apparently only 60% of y'all watching are actually subscribed. So subscribe right now, bro! And also follow me on Instagram at your with a Z because somebody else know my name. If you have any questions like this, be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I might have already answered your question. Wow. Okay, so today we're not going to dive into FL Studio. Today is a really simple beginner video, but I've received tons and tons and tons of questions about this specific topic, which is what equipment do I need to make beats? So we're going to go over all of the basic equipment that you need to start making beats and then also a little bit of the extra equipment that you can use to start making beats. The first thing you'll need to make beats is a computer. Uh, whether you choose a MacBook or an iMac, a Windows laptop or a Windows PC. I don't know much about Linux or whatever, but <laughs> just <laughs> just stick to like Mac or PC. Making beats in the beginning isn't as intensive as uh, video editing or gaming or whatever, but um, if, you, if you're planning on getting serious and using a lot of plugins when you're making beats, you have to have some computing power. So me, myself, uh, I started off on PC. Right now um, I'm more of a MacBook kind of guy because I like to be able to be mobile and, and just go everywhere. And for me, uh, uh, Apple has the best uh, portable computers. Um, there's a lot of uh, good alternatives out there for on the Windows side, but me, I prefer Apple. And definitely um, just think about getting a laptop, something portable, because if you're getting a desktop PC, as I did when I first started out making beats, um, you're literally stuck to your desktop computer and you can't take it anywhere when you're going for, for, for uh, you're going over to another producer to do a collab or when you're going over to an artist on a writer's camp or whatever. So you, you want to be able to make beats on the go because this kind of beat making industry and whatever it's kind of like bah, 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 and and make sure that it's not the absolute cheapest but don't don't think that you need the most expensive gaming laptop to make beats okay number two and this is one of the most important choices you will ever have to make as a beginning producer which is uh, choose your DAW. What is a DAW? It's a digital audio workstation. It will be your piece of software that you will use to create your beats. Uh, there's a lot of different uh, DAWs out there. I would say Ableton, Logic, FL Studio or Fruity Loops are the most used DAWs out there. They all have their own things where they excel at and their own, their own flaws and faults and all of that stuff. Uh, so it really depends on what you what kind of producer you want to be if you just want to make pure uh, Trap hip-hop beats go with FL studio if you want to if you're more about making live music and live performance and all of that stuff and organic kind of Music go for Ableton and if you want to get like a hybrid between the two go for logic uh, If you want to like record and mix and whatever I would also suggest uh, logic but for making beats be beats FL Studio has the beat making software and it doesn't mean that if you start out with one DAW that you can't ever learn a second one or whatever but um, it's like with I don't know it's like with learning languages me myself I started off with FL Studio and now I can work in Ableton and Logic but FL Studio will always be my 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 baby you know so so choose wisely uh, inform yourself read uh, articles uh, watch some tutorials and see which software you think uh, that that fits with you. It's not there's not one single answer for this, but um, If you're looking to make beats like me, I would suggest FL studio The next thing you'll need is your audio source. So that will be or a pair of headphones or uh, speakers um, In the beginning in the absolute absolute beginning if you if you're not ready to invest in expensive speakers yet I would suggest to you to just use a pair of headphones or any pair of speakers that you have at the house or that you have because you can really start to make beats without directly going for like ah, I need to invest 2000 euros into all of my equipment so it's just like me I started off making beats on a little speaker that I had it was like a Bose Soundlink uh, speaker uh, you could start to make beats on any pair of headphones or whatever and then later down the road you could invest in something better um, if you want to get uh, a new pair of headphones just 
directly to start out and you want to get a good pair of headphones get an open pair of headphones because open headphones will be much better at creating your stereo uh, field than closed headphones closed headphones are more like they, they don't leak out of the headphone on the other side they're more for like recording or for DJing or whatever if you're listening to open headphones it almost feels like you're listening to speakers but then on the top of your ears can't disturb the neighbors or whatever get an open pair of headphones definitely next up is uh, speakers or studio monitors is what you actually want if you want to really make beats uh, studio monitors are a special kind of speaker which are intended to reproduce the sound as honest as possible for example there's these I don't know home cinema systems or or speakers that are intended to just listen to music they often have a colored sound they often already have an EQ inside of them to for example bring out the bass a little bit more or whatever to make the sound sound better but if you're making the music you want to be able to hear the music as it actually is and not already enhanced because it will lead to you making uh, mistakes in your mixing or whatever imagine your speakers put out way too much bass compared to how it actually is you will probably not put your bass loud enough for it to come through on other speakers or something like that so that's why people use studio monitors there's a wide variety of studio monitors um, there's a wide variety of brands uh, for example Yamaha, KRK, Adam Audio there's a crazy amount of speakers out there there are only a few speaker brands that really are used by almost any producer in the world uh, there's, there's one classic Yamaha, the KRKs are used really often and then there's also the Adams, the brands that I just named but they are kind of the three brands that I know that are the the most used or that I come across uh, a lot in other studios later down the line you got focal and whatever but you that's 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 for later you know in the beginning I would just suggest to you to invest in like a five inch woofer type speaker it's a small type of speaker um, two speakers will probably set you back like I don't know uh, three four hundred dollars something like that I made beats for my first four years on, on, on my small KRK speakers so you don't need these big crazy speakers if you don't have a good room to put them in as well so like just start off with the basics uh, unless you you're, you're 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 rich as fuck then you know do do whatever like get some focal straight off the bat I'm, I'm not here to tell you to not do anything you know but you can have the craziest speakers but if your room isn't treated well you won't get the proper sound and all that stuff so don't worry too much about all of this technical stuff in the beginning if you're using uh, studio monitors you will obviously need um, an audio interface because these studio monitors you can't just plug them in with a little tiny aux into your computer or whatever you will need some sort of device that you can plug into your computer with a USB or or USB-C or Thunderbolt or whatever and then uh, goes out to your speakers there's a lot of audio interfaces and also the quality you know goes up with the price in the beginning I would just suggest to you to just get a basic um, audio interface and there's no quality difference for example you got the brand Focusrite is a often used brand they've got like the, the with two inputs and with four inputs and with six inputs and whatever but the quality in those doesn't really differ so if you're just starting out making beats you you'll probably just need one mic input and one you, you know one left and one right speaker output I don't really see how you would already want to record multiple things at a time in the beginning if you however are more into the live recording and you want to work with Ableton and all of that stuff you want to get an audio interface that has multiple inputs and outputs so you can for example record a mic and a guitar and a piano and a whatever at the same time but me in my six years of making beats I think I've never at my own house like in other studios yes but at my own studio or at my own house recorded more than one thing at the same time I will always record my vocal first and then maybe an extra guitar or or record guitar first I've never had to record both the guitar and the vocal at the same time so I'm not even using both of my inputs here some brands will be like oh this has 24 inputs yeah if you want to record a drum with with like 
24 mics yeah, then you can do that but you don't really need that in the beginning okay so we've reached like the like with the first things I just mentioned you can already go a long 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 way after that you can choose to get a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller the reason why it's called a MIDI keyboard is because it works with MIDI information uh, these keyboards don't actually produce a sound on their own you plug them in with a USB cable and they send MIDI information to your uh, DAW which will interpret it as a note with different properties such as velocity and which key it is and whatever it will really enhance your workflow because you will be able to actually play stuff on the keys instead of just clicking them in in your DAW so if you're more of a hands-on kind of person uh, I would suggest to you to get that but I also know a lot of producers that have never used uh, a MIDI keyboard or whatever and still are, are geniuses at, at making beats so it really depends on what you want to do me I go to these periods where sometimes I really use the keyboard uh, and other times I really don't get it if, if, if it's like if it doesn't really matter to you like just get it and you just so you have it but you don't really need it if you want to be serious about making beats you obviously will need it at a certain point in time and again there's a lot of options as far as uh, MIDI controllers and keyboards go I even have a guitar MIDI MIDI controller at the house which is really really crazy there's different brands and the main thing uh, the main difference in MIDI keyboards lies in the type of keys that there are there's keys that just you just press them and you don't feel any feedback and it just feels cheap and and, and plastic but it's still really usable and then there's more um, more high-level brands that have keys that that feel more like a real live piano and and that is really super satisfying to play on if you think it's worth it for you definitely get it because it is it is really really rewarding to play your melodies and to 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 feel like you're more hands-on with your productions so definitely over time get a midi controller because it will really enhance your workflow the last and final thing you might want to get is a microphone especially if you're a producer starting out to make beats and you want to record people over your beats uh, or, or learn how to mix vocals and you want to record your own vocals or whatever you will have to get uh, a microphone and with a microphone I would also suggest to immediately get a reflection filter a reflection filter is a thing you see in the back right there it will help to 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 block out uh, any the reflections bouncing off the walls of your room because your room will probably not be treated well acoustically so uh, a reflection filter will kind of isolate your mic and, and, and create a more dry, uh, a clean sound uh, if you're recording vocals uh, without you having to treat your whole room which is often really expensive and you don't want to do that so get a get a reflection filter uh, it's really useful uh, also get a pop filter for your mic it's the kind of net that you put in front of the mic to prevent your mic from picking up too much of the pop, pop t -t sounds which will be really annoying in your mix it could really mess up a recording that you did so get a pop filter a microphone and a reflection filter uh, there's all sorts of package deals out there that some brands do um, and don't think you need the most expensive mic to start off with I've, I've done songs with like over 3 million streams that were recorded on a, a $150 microphone so obviously as with everything if you go up the price the quality improves as well but there's it's like it's it's like a slow curve you know it's not like a uh, uh, a $300 microphone and a $600 microphone the quality is going to double it's, it's not really like that like okay $300 microphone versus a $5,000 microphone yes that's going to you're going to notice the difference but apart from that don't fall too much for the marketing and the branding and, and whatever so hey that's basically it I'm going to recap everything we learned today in just a second but first let's answer some questions all right somebody says where are you from sir I mean a native town of yours um, uh, um, <laughs> I'm from a town in Belgium called Lokeren I doubt you will know where the town is apart from if you're from Belgium but I'm half Belgian half Nigerian in case you didn't know what acoustic guitar brand does Chucky use um, my one acoustic guitar is a Spanish guitar is a Cuenca guitar and my other one which is my semi acoustic guitar is a Taylor uh, guitar that I got last year or something like that somebody says very nice video but how to reduce the latency problem um, latency can be caused by a number of things um, first of all obviously uh, bring down your buffer size 
and use if you're using Windows use an ACO driver on Mac you won't have to think about that just reduce your buffer size till it starts to crack and if it starts to crack just move it up a little bit until it, until it doesn't crack anymore and there's uh, also some plugins that can cause latency I know that there's an Antares autotune that can cause a lot of latency um, there's some other plugins that sometimes do that so keep an eye out for which plugins that you're using that are maybe causing latency or something like that and uh, shorten your buffer size and uh, yeah use the ACL driver on Windows bro. Hi, where can I download Autotune? Uh, there's different Autotune brands, there's Antares, there's the Waves real-time tune, there's the Fruity Pitcher, whatever. Me, my preferred Autotune to use myself is the Waves real-time tune because it doesn't cause any latency so I can hear my voice with Autotune when I'm recording. Um, but I know that the industry standard is uh, most of the time Antares Autotune. There's different brands where you just gotta look on Google and, and pick for yourself which one you wanna use. Somebody asked, do I have to normalize my vocals? Um, I never normalize the vocals because I already make sure that I that I record my vocals with a good amount of volume. I, I think if you normalize your vocals, um, you don't like. For me, it always messes up the the volume controls. But because, for example, if you normalize your vocals and there's just one little peak in the vocal, it will cause it to normalize out at that maximum level, and you won't be able to have like it won't be the same volume as all of the other takes you did so just keep the keep the vocals at one volume is my best advice for you and that's it bro so i hope you guys learned something today uh, the basic equipment to start making beats is a computer a digital audio workstation headphones or studio monitors an audio interface a midi keyboard or a midi controller and then maybe a microphone with a reflection filter and a pop filter i wish you guys the best of luck in making beats leave a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the youtube channel if you haven't already follow my instagram at gqbs with a z because somebody else on my name and hey Take care, love you guys. Next episode, we're gonna learn about mixing beats. Hey!